G'day everyone and welcome to an Oz Cyclone Chasers Cyclone video update for Australia today, the 17th of November 2014. My name's Chris Nitzo and today's update is sponsored by Campbell Scientific Australia, when measurements matter. Looking at the pressure pattern across Australia at the moment, it's fairly weak and this is what we tend to expect towards the end of the build up and as we start to head into the summer period. Unfortunately, because it is so weak, there is a lack of moisture that's that's popping onto the coastlines of, say, the Queensland coast, and then a lack of moisture being pumped into the NT from the northeast as well. So, folks, we've got an issue that while there's trough lines across the inland parts of the states of, of Queensland, NT and WA, unfortunately, there's not much moisture getting pumped into those trough lines, and so we're not seeing much much in the way of thunderstorm activity. In fact, we saw some extreme temperatures across southeastern Queensland yesterday and Saturday where a number of places beat their all-time record maximums and certainly their record maximums for November. Today, we've seen extreme heat across inland parts of northern Queensland and, and parts of central Queensland as well and slightly above average temperatures north of this trough line in the NT as well. The one nice exception to this lack of moisture being pumped into the trough line is this area here in the far northern Kimberley region. That area has experienced a fair bit of thunderstorm activity in the past 48 hours. But even that activity will start to wane over the next few days. In terms of global cyclone activity, we actually now have our first southern hemisphere tropical cyclone. Tropical cyclone Ajali is the first one for the 2014-2015 season in our hemisphere. It's pushing in a southerly direction and will eventually die and push to the west, or whatever's left of it will push to the west towards La Reunion. It is a French system, it is not an Australian system, it is thousands of kilometres away from Australia and will not come towards Australia over the next few days until it dies. In terms of its intensity, nothing drastic and dramatic here. We're talking about a Category 2 possibility there. Uh, not, really any any much, not really much more chance of anything higher than that. So I guess the Indian Ocean is just clearing its throat and getting itself ready for the real season. In terms of cyclone activity around Australia, none expected in the next few days in the Coral Sea, neither for the Gulf of Carpentaria, and nor do we expect any for Western Australia. However, however, in a pretty similar area to where Tropical Cyclone Alessia formed in about the same time frame uh, this year, we are seeing another low pressure system about to form to the northwest here of Christmas Island. Now, unlike Alessia, this low pressure system is expected to track in completely the opposite direction and is expected to track westwards away from Australia. And so you can see there's Christmas Island, there's Cocos Islands, and the system is starting to form just up here to the west of Indonesia. Now, if we track it over the next 48 hours, we can see that the system is starting to deepen just a little. It is reasonably weak still, so we're not talking a tropical cyclone, but it is deepening just a little as it tracks away here to the west. But you can see fairly marked track out here, out to the west, and getting around the 20 knot marks uh, in terms of wind strengths around the system itself, not expecting it to come towards Australia. Once again, I reiterate that. It may nudge the Australian area of responsibility on its attempt to push westwards. So don't be surprised if the Bureau of Meteorology in their three-day outlook for WA does mention it. However, as I mentioned, it's not going to push towards Australia. In the long-term guidance, we do see some potential developments around the Solomon Islands, but you'll need to be a subscriber to be able to go into more detail about that with you. The Madden Julian Oscillation was developing there for a little while and then just decided to die as forecast. I mean, there was no, no threat of it pushing east towards Australia. It was always going to die out here in the Indian Ocean. Now, it might rejuvenate itself a little bit, uh, but it'll stay in the Indian Ocean for the foreseeable future. So we're not expecting any enhanced period of the MJO over the Australian or maritime continent. Now, with the MJO where it is, we expect to see very dry conditions across central, northern uh, and northeastern Australia. So when, there's no surprises there at all. The MJO is in phase one. It might push into phase two before dying. So we, we're going to see fairly dry anomalies for the next, for at least the next five or six days. And then following on from that, we'll see an introduction of a fairly deep trough system into Queensland and NT. And with that, this time, hopefully, we'll get enough moisture to see some fairly scattered showers and thunderstorms from it. 
Remembering, of course, that when we're talking about the MJO, we're talking about its effects more in the far northern to northern section of the coast. So we're not really interested in southeast Queensland. We're not really interested in the Gascoigne region. Uh, in the Gascoigne region. Uh, so we're, we're really more interested in this far northern Kimberley, NT, uh, Townsville, Cairns, that sort of area, Torres Straits. That's the area that we're focusing in on with the MJO. So just because I'm saying there's not, it's going to wind down for the next six days and you get a storm in southeast Queensland, that's not us being wrong. That's us uh, not paying any attention to this region because the MJO has very little effect in this region. For most of the nation tomorrow, we're seeing a very, uh, very, very boring and benign weather pattern, except for maybe the North Kimberley and the interior parts of WA, which are going to see some fairly uh, scattered showers and thunderstorms in that region, particularly near the coast. But the NT, you're going to see below average storm activity. Queensland, except for the southeastern parts of the state, you're not going to see too much in the way of rainfall. However, there might be some really good thunderstorms embedded with this lot in southeast Queensland. So be aware of that on Tuesday. Wednesday, we could be seeing some fairly scattered activity here across the southeast. Uh, and then Thursday, that activity starts to decrease. But once again, severe storms possible. Also, the North Kimberley activity starts to decrease as well. It becomes more isolated on Wednesday and Thursday. And the NT almost devoid of thunderstorm activity, which is just amazing for that part of the world this time of year. On Friday, the thunderstorms start to return to the NT. And we start to see an increase once again in activity over the Kimberley. And once again, we start to see what will hopefully become a fairly strong trough system across Queensland over the next or from the 21st through to about the 30th or the 1st of December. We could be looking at a fairly strong trough system here and hopefully that will dump a fair, fair few showers and storms and hopefully a fair bit of rain with that. But that will be the start of it there. You can start to see these splotches across inland parts of Queensland. That's the start of that deep trough system. We'll talk more about that deep trough system in our state update for subscribers tomorrow. Now, in the future four days, so the four to eight day period, once again, we see storms returning to the NT. We see good thunderstorm activity returning to the North Kimberley. And we see that trough system. Look at this, the amount of rain it's creating over inland parts of the country. So there are positive signs there in the long term. But as I say, we'll hone in on that in the state video updates. If you're a subscriber, they'll be out. Uh, the Queensland one will be out sometime between 9 and 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. So check that out to find out more about where that rain could fall. So that's it for today, folks. And we'll talk again on Thursday night. Have a great week.